shown with those who are here. As you are able, please stand and rise as we make a way for her. Have patience and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on me. I, I confess that I have turned from you and given myself, myself into the power of sin. I am truly sorry and come to repent. In your compassion, forgive my sin. He loved us even when we were dead in sin and made the light together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, I strain you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
strong and do not fear. Hear ye your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue out of the speech shall sing for joy. For a water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. We'll sing together Psalm 146. <laughs> Say. 
next to me. Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. And yet you do not supply your bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Word of God, word of life. Pastor Nancy Nyland, Director for Evangelical Mission in the Indiana, Kentucky Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I bring you greetings from our Synod Bishop, Bill Guffian, and the rest of my colleagues on the IK Synod staff. Today I'm sharing with you a sermon and prayers for Sunday, September 5th, 2021, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. The Gospel reading today is found in Mark 7, verses 24 to 37. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell, tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our Gospel reading this week, we hear two miracle stories about Jesus' healing. It's important to notice that these healings happen in Gentile territory, and it is Gentile people who are healed. Jesus is on the move. Traveling, he sets out and goes away to the region of Tyre. He needed rest. He was no doubt exhausted. He ducked into a house trying to avoid the crowds, but he could not escape notice. Even in Gentile territory, Jesus' reputation preceded him. A woman so eager for her demon-possessed daughter to be healed didn't wait for Jesus to come out of the house, but rather, it seems, Unannounced and uninvited, she goes into the house and bows down at Jesus' feet, begging him to cast the demon out of her daughter. There is a verbal exchange between Jesus and this woman, a wrestling of sorts, but the woman's persistence and tenacity prevails, and Jesus casts out the demon from her daughter. Jesus heals the child. There are at least two or more interpretations of this ver verbal exchange between Jesus and the Gentile woman. First, one could wonder 
if Jesus intentionally insults the woman, knowing that the woman's comeback will make a point to those around Jesus, that Jesus knows that the lesson, the point that is made, will be stronger coming from this woman. The woman certainly makes the point quite well. In fact, what results is not one point, but rather two points being made. First, all the, all the people are included in Jesus' ministry and in God's kingdom. God shows no partiality, and therefore Jesus' ministry, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is for all. And the second point is about power and wisdom. The power and wisdom of the supposed outsider, the foreigner, the en enemy, the supposed second-class person, this woman. Is this what Jesus is up to? Perhaps. Or, on the other hand, one can wonder if Jesus is the student here and the woman the teacher. Is Jesus bogged down in what his teachers in the synagogues have taught him? Teaching about Jews and Gentiles, who's in and who's out. This teaching informing Jesus' reaction about being set only for the lost people of Israel, the Jews. Does he learn something from the woman in this back and forth exchange? Does she make him stop and think? Is she the rabbi, the one who opens Jesus' perspective a bit more? Later in our reading, Jesus says to the deaf mute man at Sidon, be opened. Could it be that the Syrophoenician woman has already done the same for Jesus? Perhaps. We may never fully understand the exchange, the verbal wrestlings between Jesus and this woman, but what is clear is that Jesus cast out the demon from her daughter. Some might say that the woman was a model of determination or verbal dexterity rather than faith. A mother bear, so to speak, fighting for the life of her child, showing desperation and tenacity rather than faith. But when we look at the woman's actions, we find that indeed she demonstrated a deep faith. We might learn from her faith as well. Notice the woman's persistence. She refuses to go away until she gets what she came for. Notice the woman's hopeful insight. She refuses to believe even a tiny speck of grace isn't out of reach. Knowing just a scrap can make the difference for her. Notice the woman's trusting acceptance. She is willing to take Jesus at his word and journeys home alone to confirm her daughter's healing. What is faith? Is it a kind of certainty? The opposite of doubt? Or is faith a type of courage in the midst of this doubt, or apathy, or timidness, or fear? As we consider the Syrophoenician woman's actions, we find that faith is bold and daring and insistent. It per puts first things first, a child's health, for instance. Faith gathers every resource available from wit to wisdom, insight to audacity, creativity to risk. It seeks God out with vim and vigor and is not afraid to wrestle, to strive, to struggle with God. Faith is tenacious. Faith is living. Faith is active. As our second reading in James puts it, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Indeed, we learn about faith, and active faith, from this woman. Faith, the woman's faith, the disciples' faith, our faith, is not about never messing up, not about getting all answers right in life, not about articulating the proper doctrine or the right theology, not about making all the right choices. Faith is about going to Jesus and Jesus coming to us. Clinging to Jesus and expecting Jesus to heal, to restore, to save. Looking to Jesus for grace and mercy and love. Faith. Faith is not something we can muster up ourselves, not something we can create. 
Faith is pure and simply a gift from God. Faith is living in right relationship with God, a righteousness given to us through Jesus, our Savior. Faith is being washed by the blood of the Lamb and being set free to love God and love neighbor. Free to serve God, free to serve our neighbors with all we've got. Faith is the courage to take bold risks, knowing that we will make mistakes along the way, and these mistakes will be met by the gracious forgiveness of God. Faith, in our own deafness, in our own muteness, Faith is about being healed by Jesus. Ephatha, Jesus says, be opened. And we are opened. And we can speak. And like the crowd, being astounded beyond measure, we zealously proclaim what Jesus has done, sharing this gospel message in all we say and in all we do, in our words and in our deeds. For faith by itself if it has no works, it's dead. Amen. In this moment, while I'm uh, getting this put away, I just want to remind everybody that next Sunday, September the 12th, we have a couple special things going on. First of all, Pastor Dan Fugate from the Synod Office will be here to preach, and we will have communion. So next Sunday, we'll be having a minister, and we'll be having communion. It is also God's Work on Hands Sunday, so we will be uh, filling the school bags that we've made and collected supplies for. So that will all be next Sunday. So please join us. If you still have your yellow t-shirt for God's Work on Hands,
advances and thus profess our faith by understanding the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, created in heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. Christ be with you always. Just told you about next week already.